you're having a blessed time and that your family is being blessed. We're glad you're here. If you're joining us online, we're so delighted that you're joining us. Invite a friend to join now. We're about to worship together. We're about to tell God thanks. And we're going to celebrate Christmas together. Would you stand with me as we get ready for prayer? As we do so, I want to let you know that one of our brothers went home to be with Jesus this week. That's our brother Ronnie, who would come in the wheelchair and sit on that side. He went home. I'm sorry to bear this news, but he was a child of God. So pray for his family. Pray for his family this week, and they will announce funeral arrangements in due time. We hope you've been enjoying the nativity display at the front. If you have contributed, we say thank you, and remember to pick up your displays at the end of today. Today's the last day. God bless you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for being awesome. We thank you, God, for being faithful. Father, we thank you for being large and in charge. Father, we thank you that there are no surprises for you, that you see all things, that you know all things. Father, we thank you for this season when we will get together with family and with friends. We pray in the name of Jesus for supernatural protection, for insight, for understanding as we navigate our complex relationships. Father, we thank you for the opportunity. And we remember our brother's family this morning as they will mourn with hope. Father, we pray that you would comfort them today and that you would bless them. Father, today we thank you for the opportunity to worship together. So many things will happen as we celebrate you and the gift of Jesus. We pray that your spirit will fill the room that your spirit will take control, that our worship, God, would be extravagant as we say we love you for loving us. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Father, for the many who are here for the first time, would you give them a Holy Spirit welcome as we have extended also. Now, in the name of Jesus, we receive the goodness of God today. We receive the presence of God today. And we welcome you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. It is our tradition to have communion. You may be seated for a little bit. We'll do so now. Good morning, everyone. According to the Constitution of the United States, if anything should happen to the president and he's not able to function as he was elected to do. The responsibility falls to the vice president. He is plan B. And so you will notice, for example, the president and the vice president, they never travel together in the same vehicle or the same airplane. Should anything happen to the vice president while he is acting as the president, the responsibility of the president goes to the Speaker of the House, Plan C. In God's book, we read about his plan. When man sinned, God recited his plan. It seemed as if that was God's plan B. It seemed as if God's plan A was that he would have created a human race and that everything would be perfect for as long as time lasted. And because the first couple sinned, God had to quickly come up with a plan B. That is a lie from the pit of hell. In Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8, we read the book best of God's plan, that the Lamb of God who was slain on Calvary was slain before the foundations of the world. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. That before Genesis 1 verse 1 happened, God already had a plan 
that, was in, that involved the death of Jesus Christ. How God could have come up with that plan? Because God knew long time before he created this world, before he created man and woman on the sixth day, God knew that this human race that he created that we would have seen. And because of his foreknowledge, from before the world began, God made a plan that Jesus would come to die for us. So hear me now and hear me well. Every one of us this morning who takes communion ought to be a child of God. Every person this morning who is taking communion, I want you to think about this. This is not something that I made up this week. You were in God's plan before the foundation of the world. Your story was not an accident. I don't care how your parents conceived you. That was not an accident. God had it all worked out long ago that Jesus would die on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Oh, I, I think I'm talking to some... I honestly don't know about you who are sitting down there, but me, I am excited to know that little old me, little old me, who nobody in the White House knows who I am. But God knew me long before this world was created. And God said, I am going to redeem him. I don't care where he is born. I don't care who is his mother and his father. I am going to... Let me stop and let's do communion. <laughs> Father, I hold in my hand a piece of bread. Only those of us who are redeemed can understand what this means. This represents the body of your son, Jesus Christ. It was planned out long time ago that Jesus would die on a cross in Jerusalem to redeem me. And today, God, when I say thanks to you, I say it from the bottom of my heart. When I say thanks to you, God, I say it with all of my being. And Lord Jesus, ain't nobody going to stop me from saying thanks to you, God, for the death of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's take the bread. And the blood. What can I say about the blood? In Hebrews 9, it says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness or washing away of sins. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins. Thank you, Lord. Hey, hey. The best detergent in the world, Jesus, is your blood. Wash away sins and then washes away the stains that the sin caused. So that when your father looks on us, Jesus, he sees us clean as if we have never sinned. Glory. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that I stand before you free from sin because of the blood of Jesus. Let's take the cup. Let me take my seat before I start to preach. God bless you. Good morning, good morning church. Wow, all right, everybody's looking good. Just wanna invite you to stand with us this morning as we come before the Lord and minister to him. And we're gonna invite him to open up the heavens so we could see him, so he could fill up every part of our praise. So let's worship him this morning.
We're gathered in your name. We're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're saved. continue to worship him this morning and now we'll have the scripture reading Greetings in the matchless name of Jesus. Greetings. The reading is from St. Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. 
Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Hallelujah. Here ended the lesson, thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Can we bless King Jesus this morning? Can we bless King Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I searched in the spirit as to what the Father would have me pray about or lead us into prayer, he said a greater revelation of Jesus. It is great to come to Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is great to come to Jesus but to have a greater and deeper revelation of who Jesus is requires intentionality. Amen? Amen. Let us go to him in prayer. Hallelujah. 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 King Jesus, we bless you this morning. King Jesus, we want to know more about you, Lord God. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to touch our minds today. We ask you to touch our hearts today, Lord God. Father God, we want to more, know more about your son whom you sent for us, Lord God, to cleanse us, to give us salvation, to give us a new mind and a new heart. Mighty God, we come before you as a people of God. We come before you saying we want to know more of you. Mighty God, we ask Ask you, Lord God, to expand our capacity for greater revelation of who Jesus is, for greater revelation and greater understanding, greater knowledge, O oh God, that we may arise as a people, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, that we may arise in boldness, O oh God, for when there is greater revelation, we have greater understanding, we have greater confidence, O oh God. So, Father God, we ask you to touch your people today. We ask you to be amongst your people today we ask you to show yourself strong amongst your people we ask you to reveal yourself as the great I am we ask you to reveal yourself as the first and the last the beginning and the end the God above all gods the king above all kings the one whose no power is greater than the one that without you there is no Savior mighty God we ask for deeper revelation we ask you to take us deeper we ask you to take us higher mighty God we ask you to open up our understanding oh God in the name of Jesus father God we want more of you in this season God we don't just want to do the traditional but Lord God we want you to reveal your son in numerous ways oh God through your word by your spirit by your presence oh God mighty God we ask you for a move amongst your people in the name of Jesus that we may arise oh God with newness that we may arise with power because we know the Jesus we know the Savior we know the Lord we know the Redeemer who came to cleanse us of our sins and redeem us back unto the Father mighty God we ask for more of you mighty God we ask for more of your power mighty God we ask for more of your anointing mighty God we ask for more of your presence we ask for more of your peace we ask for more of your joy unspeakable mighty God we ask you to reveal your son Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
King Jesus, we bless you today. King Jesus, we glorify you today. King Jesus, we exalt you today. King Jesus, we extol you today. We adore you today as King of all kings, as Lord of all lords. We want to know more of you. We want more knowledge of you. We want more revelation of who you are, Lord Jesus. Show yourself amongst your people, mighty God, that we might be strengthened in this journey, mighty God. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's good to see you all here today. But just about now, I want to acknowledge a very special guest that we have in our presence this morning, a young man by the name of Camden. And I'm going to ask Camden to bring his parents, Julian and Kadeen, with him and all those who came with this wonderful family. Grandparents, godparents, uncles, aunts, cousins. Could you please make them welcome as they come? Oh, you carry the whole church. <laughs> wow. What a beautiful company. What a beautiful company. So, so this is Julian. This is Kadeen. Um, grandparents on the maternal side. Maternal side. Okay, one over there. No. No? No maternal. No maternal, maternal grandparents. No. Grandparents on the paternal <laughs> side. Granddad. <laughs> grandma. Okay. Aunts, any aunts, any uncles? Uncle. Okay, uncle. Okay, great. Godparents. Not here. Not here. Not here. Okay, they got scared. <laughs> <laughs> Came then when you see them, tell them that nothing to be scared of. Right? Well, we want to welcome this wonderful group of people here, and it is our honor to, to present Camden Ray Beckford to the Lord on this beautiful day. He was born on March 12th. Can I tell you a little bit of secret? Listen, from he's been born, grandma, not calling any names, she's out of control. <laughs> she's the first and only grandmother in the world. <laughs> but I want to share something with, with Camden's parents, something from scripture that has that has really been resonating in my heart. And today, as you, as you bring your son to present him to the Lord, I commit to you Psalm 127 and verse 3. It says, children are a heritage of the Lord. The offspring is his reward. A heritage. A heritage is something that we inherit. Very often, Parents, when they are making up their wills, they will leave things on the will for their children. Some, of, some children get more than others, right? But whatever it is, that becomes... Of course you agree with me. <laughs> Preacher already, eh? But whatever it is that they get from their parents, that is their inheritance. So we think about it that Camden becomes a heritage from God to Julian and Kadeen, that God has passed on to them a special blessing. But here's the other piece, here's the other piece. It says that the fruit of the womb is God's reward. God's reward. Some people might wonder, why is God rewarding some people? But whatever it is, that is God's business. And in this case, God has chosen to reward this couple and this wider family with this wonderful baby. What does all of that mean? It means, therefore, that Julian and Kadeen 
and the rest of this family, you have been brought into partnership with God for his upbringing. Let me see if any of you are going to run away. <laughs> you have been brought into partnership with God. It means, therefore, you know when we say it takes a village to raise a child, God knew that all along. This village was created. This village was created so that Kemden would be brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. The direct responsibility goes to his parents. But for the rest of us who are part of the family structure, we are part of that organization. We are part of that enterprise. And so today, as we present him to the Lord, we are presenting back to God his inheritance. We are presenting back to God his reward. And we're asking God to bless this inheritance, to bless this reward, so that all goes well. Let us stand as a congregation and pray as we pray over Kemden. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that whatever you do, you do well. And today, God, you remind us that every child that is born is your inheritance to a family, is your reward to a family. God, today, as a congregation, we join with Julian and Kadeen in giving thanks for the birth of their son, Kemden Ray. We thank you, Lord, for bringing him into this world. We thank you, Lord, that you preserved him long before he was born. We thank you, God, that you had knowledge of him long before he was conceived in his mother's womb. And God, according to your plan, you chose Julian and you chose Kadeen to be his parents. Uh -huh. Lord, today, as a congregation, we pray for the parents. We thank you, Lord, for them. We thank you, God, that you have endowed them with wisdom that you have given them resources, that you are making a way for them, Lord Jesus, to train up this child in the way he should go, so that when he's old, he will not depart from it. We thank you for the responsibility that you have given to them. And we thank you that you have surrounded them with people, Lord Jesus, who will share in that responsibility. Bless them as parents, God. Cause that they will be exemplary. And Lord, in bringing up their son, they will honor you. Today, God, we pray for Kemden. Lord, thank you that you know this child when he was being knitted in his mother's womb. We thank you, God, that you had your eyes on him all along. And here today, God, we join with his parents in presenting him to you. We ask you, God, that according to your will, you will release a supernatural blessing over his life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, your word teaches us that our steps are ordered by the word. Lord God, we declare and decree that Camden's steps will be ordered by the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you that you will set your angels to guard him. Your word teaches us that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, Lord God. And so, Father, we pray that a hedge of protection will be built around this child. That, God, he will be protected from the evil devices and plans of the enemy. Lord, we ask you that you will speak over him a bright and prosperous future. We dare to ask that of you because you say no good thing will you withhold from your children. And so, God, we speak bright future. We speak prosperity in his life. We speak success in his life all the days of his life. And God, as the crowning glory, we pray that Kemden will grow up to know you as Lord and Savior. That he will serve you and live for you and bring glory and honor to your name. Thank you for him, God. Thank you for him. And we pray, God, that you will bless him as you have promised. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen. 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 This is to certify that Camden Ray Beckford, born on March 12th, was presented to the Lord at the Faith Place Church on the 18th day of December, 2022. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. It is our pleasure. It is our honor. It is our joy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. God Thank bless you so you. much. And, and then we have a little something oh. for him. <laughs> Thank you so Enjoy. much. Thank Praise you. God.
Praise oh. God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I know you oh, want to preach, right? <laughs> Have we got all the photos we want? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great, great, great. Thank you, Jaden. Great, great, great. God bless you. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Welcome to church. Just turn to your neighbor and tell them, welcome to church. Greet them with a smile. Greet them with a fist bump. Greet them with a shake hand. Whatever it is, just say hello to your neighbor. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for being with us this morning to celebrate in this season. And there's a popular song done by Kirk Franklin which says, Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. And we want to remember that. Praise God. Praise God. To our online friends watching the service online, we want to say welcome to church. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. And we will continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We will continue with a few announcements. Today is our um, drop off or blanket drive. So if you have your blankets, please drop them off in the foyer. Someone will be there to receive them, right? It's going to get a little bit chilly, and we want to do our part by presenting these blankets to those who are less fortunate. So please remember to drop off your blankets today. It's the only day. Don't take them next week. No one will be here to receive them. Drop them off today. Amen? Amen. Amen. We continue with our grief share for the holiday season. Tomorrow is the grief share seminar at 6.30 p.m., so you can register to, and um, be a part of that. Please see Winsome. Winsome, can you wave? She's at the back, that wonderful young lady at the back there. Yes, please see her after the service if you would like to participate in a grief share. We have our holiday service schedule. Next week, Sunday, is Christmas Day. We will be having a one-hour service from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m., just worship and the word. We'll be here just praising God. 11 a.m., I said, or p.m.? What did I say? P.m.? Oh, boy, I might be in um, Asian time. But Eastern time is 11 a.m. to 11, 11, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Ah, there you go. We got it. We got it. Right? One hour service next week, Sunday. You don't want to miss it. And our New Year's Eve service will be at 7.30 p.m., to 9 p.m. Aha, I got that one right. Yes, so, so that's Saturday, New Year's Eve, and then New Year's Day, we come back to church to give God praise again. One hour service on New Year's Day, 10 to 11 a.m. Amen? Amen? Amen. You don't want to miss it. Praise God. Praise God. Are you enjoying the Christmas presentations from our, our seniors last week and our young people the week before? Amen. Amen. Praise God. This week, we'll be having the now generation. They'll be coming shortly to do their um, Christmas presentation. Amen. As we transition, we remember that we all need a prayer. And we have some wonderful prayer folks here who will be willing to pray for you and with you. If you need in-person prayer, please see them after the service or during the week. If you want to send them a text or send them an email, they will intercede for you. We believe in the power of prayer. And I love this church because we have leaders who pray. They don't, they don't just talk. They pray. Praise God. And we love that about our leaders. They pray. Amen. Amen. As we give today, we provide various opportunities to give. You can give via text using faith to 954-953-3730, or you can zell using the email give at faithplace.church, or you can use the envelope at the various locations. We are in this Christmas season, and we know sometimes that we get, you know, we get exuberant about the gifts and the presents and all of these things. But let us remember that God came, that Jesus came to give hope to humanity. Jesus came to give hope to humanity. There's a lot of persons who are without hope. And we as believers, we have the hope of Jesus. If anything we can give to someone, let us share that hope. Let us share the message of Jesus. Share a kind word. Share an encouragement to someone this Christmas season. 
to bring hope to our lost world. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the blessed hope that we have in you, Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you have sent your son to take on humanity, to die on a cross, to reconcile us with the Father. And for that, Lord God, we want to say thank you. We want to praise you. We want to worship you. And Father, as we give today, we give in recognition of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Bless your people today, Father, as they give. Open doors for them, Father, as they give. Grant them favor today, Father, as they give to your kingdom. And we are careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. And now, Faith Place Church presents A Baby Changes Everything. Give them a hand, please.
one two for one two. Come use this one. Over two thousand years ago, a baby was born. Not just any baby, but the baby. You know, that baby that's centered around the Christmas story? Many of you are familiar with the traditional nativity story. Well, today, we want to share a modern retelling of this popular story. Some of you may not be ready for this newer rendition, but we hope you will open your mind and heart to a 2022 translation of the story of how a baby changes everything.
present on good news. I'm doing war, politics, crime, not my interest, not what I went to journalism for, school for. I need something different. 
Right now, there are people on the front line, which is where I want to be, reporting on real news. I heard about a census that's happening somewhere in the Middle East. Why can't I be there? That sounds like something interesting, not like a <coughs> war. Hmm. A census. A census. I wonder if that's connected to this prophecy. I think I remember something about an ancient prophet saying something. I speak to my news manager. Jessica, I've been looking all over for you. For what? Well, I need you on assignment. There's a big news story that I need for you to cover. Okay. Well, there's talk in Jerusalem that there's a baby about to be born. Okay, babies are born every day, mm -hmm. so. But this is the baby. The baby? Yes. Mm -hmm. Messiah, baby Messiah. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. The Messiah, the one that's been prophesied about. Yes, there's talk that this baby is going to be born in Jerusalem. And I need for you to go and cover it. When do I leave? You still here? Right now! seen you in a while, you've been busy. Yeah, I've been out on assignments, you know. Assignments? Yeah. Like, so that means you went to Earth, you went to Israel, you went to Palestine, Qatar for the World Cup. <laughs> 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 no, it's actually, you know, this sin thing, it, the sin just grieves the Father. So, he came up with a plan. He's going to send his only son to redeem mankind because it's the only way. Man, you just said a mouthful, but what's the mission? Like, what are you doing? I had to go visit a girl named Mary to let her know that she was chosen to be the mother 
of the Son of God. <laughs> really? What, what did she say? How'd she take it? She was actually pretty cool about it. Really? Cool? Yeah, you know, at first she was kind of nervous, seemed scared, but maybe it's because she saw an angel. <laughs> but, you know, right before I left, she actually was very excited. She was praising God and thanking him for the baby, and she was actually excited to tell her fiancé, Joseph, the good news. Man, I wonder if she knows what's going to happen with the Son of God, the Messiah. He's going to change everything. Yeah. Not only is he going to change everything, but the way he's going to do it and what he was sent to do.
Francisco Jeremiah reporting from On Scene in Jerusalem. Tonight we have some shepherds who will want to share a story with us. Welcome all our friends around the world. All eyes are going to be on Bethlehem, the ancient city of David, the ancient city of David where the greatest thing happened tonight. That's right, the Messiah was born tonight. We were the first visitors. So this is how it happened. We were out in the fields with our flocks of sheep. And then an angel appeared. Yeah, it was bright, shining all around us. And they were scared. No, we weren't. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> Whatever. The angel told us, do not be afraid. So you were afraid. As I was saying, the angel told us that he was bringing good news that would be a great joy for all. He explained that, that the Savior was born tonight. <laughs> and that he was the Messiah. So, there you have it. Tonight, the Savior was born. What turned in from a busy night through the census then turned into a uh, well, ordinary night actually turned into a busy night, and now it's going to turn into a holy night.
After that night, the world has never been the same. A teenager from Nazareth, teenage girl from Nazareth, came to town with her husband-to-be to register for a census. They were poor, they were young, they were alone. She gave birth to her son, the son of God, in a stable surrounded by animals, and her first visitors, shepherds. Word spread, and the gist of the gossip or tea hmm, mm. that night and the days that followed was this teenage girl who gave birth to the Messiah. Not many people believed her story. Unmarried, but she had the privilege of giving birth to the King of Glory, who indeed would give his life to save the world. His story is God's story, a story of how God loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believed that he came to save them would have eternal life. But it was that teenage girl and her baby that we cannot forget. It was that baby away in a manger that would change everything.
Let's hear it for them. A 
baby changes everything. I want to take our attention back to St. Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 33. And the angel said unto her, Do not fear, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be the son of the Most High. And, his, and God shall give him the throne of his father David, and of his increase of his kingdom, there will be no end. Every parent understands that line that a baby changes everything. These innocent and helpless human beings, when they arrive in our lives, everything changes. And yet, the question is asked, what was so special about Mary's baby? Well, I want to take you in an understanding, a deeper understanding that Mary's baby changed everything. You see, my friend, this is history being played out right before your very eyes. If I could just for a moment invite you to join with me as we start in the Garden of Eden. On a terrible day, a serpent had a conversation with a woman and eventually led this woman and her husband Adam and Eve to commit a sin. God came down and visited the three characters involved in that story. And God spoke to each of them. And in Genesis chapter 3 and verses 14 and 15, he addressed the serpent first. Pay attention to what God said. He said to the serpent that you are going to be the worst of all living livestock. You will eat dirt all the days of your life and climb and walk on your belly. But you see, God was talking in verse 14 to a serpent. In verse 15, God said, and I will put enmity between your seed and the woman's seed, between you and the woman, and the seed of the woman or the offspring of the woman will crush your head and you shall strike his heel. Verse 14, God was speaking to the animal, the serpent. Verse 15, God was speaking to that diabolical creature called Satan. Because you see, between him and Adam and Eve, they committed a terrible act. They brought death, destruction on the earth. But God had a plan. God had a plan. And that plan was announced in verse 15 when he spoke to Satan, not the serpent, Satan. And as far as Satan was concerned, this was his opportunity to set in motion the greatest military attack against God's plan. He heard God said that there was going to be an offspring of the woman, but Satan nor the woman nor the man knew what that offspring looked like because up until that time there has never been a pregnancy. Adam and Eve had not yet begun to participate in the greatest enterprise of human history. They had never got pregnant. But we catch it over in Genesis chapter 4. And Satan must have been caught napping because they happened to have not one baby, but two babies right behind the other. And by the time Satan realized what was going on, he released envy and jealousy in the life of the baby called Abel, um, Cain, who had grown up now to be a man. And so Abel committed the first sin. You see, Satan's campaign was to make sure that there would be no offspring born of a woman who would attack him, and he struck first time, but he failed. God had a plan. And then we see over in Exodus chapter 1, where the, children, the Hebrew people, they were enslaved in Egypt. And strangely enough, 
they were growing faster than the Egyptian rulers could handle. And Pharaoh got nervous and told the midwives that as of now, when you go down into Goshen, where the Hebrew people were, when you deliver babies, if there is a boy baby I want you to kill that boy because you see somewhere Satan began to remember that God used the pronoun he in the prophecy so he was not concerned with all babies his his diabolical plan was against the boy babies you see Satan launched a program to abort attack and annihilate any possible offspring that would crush his head. You all didn't hear what I say. Satan's plan was to abort, attack, or annihilate any boy baby that he could lay his, high, lay his hands on. He tried very hard in Egypt. And, and Pharaoh launched what was one of the earliest infanticide the world has ever seen. Where he ordered that every Hebrew baby should be thrown into the Nile River. But God had a plan. And there was one boy baby that escaped the plan of Pharaoh. I mean the plan of Satan. And this boy baby was spared. And at age 80, God released a portion of his plan. This baby turned senior citizen was used by God to lead God's people out of captivity. And then it dawned on Satan that it seems as if God was going to cause that offspring to come through the nation of Israel and so Satan stepped up and revised his program and he decided now to direct all his attack against the Hebrew people and so they suffered all kinds of things famine international attacks all kinds of problems but God had a plan and so one day there was a famine in Israel and there was a woman by the name of Naomi and her husband and their two children. They left Israel and they went down to a place called Moab. If I could fast forward the story, her husband died, her two boys died, and she was left with just one of her daughters-in-law called Ruth. And Naomi said, I'm going back home. And Ruth said, I'm going with you. No, you stay. I am going with you because your God will become my God. Well, according to the cultural rules of Israel, when Naomi and Ruth arrived back in Bethlehem, the plan was that Naomi introduced Ruth so that Ruth could be married to a Jewish man. And they set about to carry out God's plan. And Ruth met a wonderful, handsome, single man called Boaz. God had a plan. This Moabite Gentile woman was married to this Jewish man. What did God have in mind? I'm glad you asked. Because together they gave birth to a boy that they called him Obed. Obed, what's so significant about Obed? Hold that thought. You see, Obed eventually grew up and he gave birth to a man by the name of Jesse. And then Jesse, not, he didn't have not one, not two, not four, but he had eight sons. What is a family doing with eight sons? And listen, remember that a baby changes and God earmarked Jesse's last boy. And so something terrible happened in the kingdom. The king, Saul, he messed up. And God told him that he was going to take away the kingdom from him. Because you see what happened. The constitution required that the next king after Saul was supposed to be Saul's son. And God reached over into this family in Bethlehem. Um, Jesse's family and after they went through the first seven and qualified boys God said how about the last one David listen carry David in your mind because the prophecy in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 must come to pass and as it turned out as it turned out later on as the children recited 
as Israel grew to become a strong nation, they began to do all kinds of bad things. A prophet rose up in their midst by the name of Isaiah. And Isaiah had a lot to say in his day. In chapter 9, verse 1, Isaiah prophesied, you know, predicted, looked into the future and spoke something. And Isaiah said, the people who have walked in darkness has seen a great light. Go down to verse 6. And Isaiah looking into the future, 700 years ahead. And Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, of the increase of his kingdom. There will be no end and God will give him the kingdom of whom? His father David. The zeal of the Lord has determined it. Well, Isaiah released his prophet, his prophecy and all kinds of other prophecies. But meanwhile, Isaiah was talking, the children of Israel, they had adopted a culture, a culture of idolatry in direct disobedience of what God told them that they should worship no other gods. And so God sent other prophets, including Jeremiah, to tell them that he was going to banish them into 70 years of exile. That exile was effected through Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and he raided Jerusalem, took away the choicest of men and took them back to Babylon. But God had a plan because a baby must change everything. They languished for 70 years in Babylon, but God raised up a remnant. And when they returned to Jerusalem, although there was no kingdom as such, God still kept his business clean. And so now we come into Luke chapter 1. And the angel that you saw being spoken of, Gabe, Gabriel, visited this Jewish girl and spoke into her life what was going to be the fulfillment of prophecy. Mary was not a stranger to the prophecy. But let me tell you something. Our nemesis, Satan, was not going to give up. Because remember, his plan was to abort, to attack, or to annihilate every boy, child that he could lay his, eye, his hand on. Because his business was to ensure that the offspring of the woman would never, ever, ever strike him. But listen, let's bring David back into the picture. The next time you read the Christmas story... Please read Matthew chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 17. Through 48 generations, 48 generations beginning with Abraham, God preserved a line, a lineage, a special family. And listen to that family. In that family was the man called David. And you wonder, how is David going to be a part of Jesus' family? Family. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Because you see, in Luke chapter 2, God engineered something. The children of Israel at the time were under the rulership of the Roman government. And the Roman government launched a census. And the stupid census required that everybody should go back to their ancestral town. Guess what? Mary was going to be married to Joseph. And Joseph, shh, it's a secret. Joseph came from the line of David. So when you read verse 17 of Matthew chapter 1, you will see that because of the culture and the religious laws, Joseph was related to Jesus. Jesus came from the line of David. So now, when Jesus was born, when Jesus was born, God was ahead of Satan. A baby 
changes everything. And by the time Satan realized that, oops, one more boy baby has slipped through. I wasn't able to abort that one. I wasn't able to successfully attack that one. Let me see if I can annihilate that one. And so Satan entered into the heart of Herod and commissioned Edward, Herod to go through the whole kingdom of Israel and slay every boy child. God was one step ahead of him because by the time Herod released that rule, Joseph and Mary had taken the boy baby Jesus down to Egypt to be protected. Oh my goodness, a baby changes everything and Satan watched that baby and Satan tried his best starting first of all in the wilderness in Luke chapter 4 and he attacked him if Satan had succeeded in getting Jesus to commit one of three sins Satan would have won but little did he know that that baby was here to change everything. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 4 that Satan departed from him for a season. And that was one of the biggest mistakes he made because the baby grew. And three years after his ministry was born, the greatest showdown on earth occurred. Remember in Genesis 3, and verse 15, God said that I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and the woman's seed, and the seed of the woman will crush your head, and you shall bruise is heal. Well, let me tell you something. That prophecy was represented in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, where the, where the apostle Paul writes, in the fullness of time. Hold on, hold that thought. What does that mean in the fullness of time? You see, you have to make the connection to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, when God said, I will, I will, I will take God at his word. Satan did not, was not able to abort to attack and to annihilate the seed of the woman. And for over 6,000 years, Satan tried and he tried and he tried. And the greatest showdown on earth occurred at Calvary when the seed of the woman, somebody help me, attacked Satan and crushed his head at Calvary. Listen to me, Mary's baby changed everything. Everything, Because Paul said in Galatians 4 and verse 4, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son made under a woman. Can I just pause and explain something to you? That when God gave the prophecy in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, he did not include Adam. He said the seed of the woman. It did not involve a man. Because when you read Luke chapter 1, the angel said to Mary that this is how you're going to be pregnant. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you and shall overshadow you. And the Holy One that you will be carrying will be the Son of God. It did not involve Adam. Because God had said it was the seed of the woman. My friends, the last verse of that song that Melissa sang is my testimony. It could be your testimony. Singing about a baby that changed everything, the songwriter says, now my world has turned around. I once was lost, but now I'm found. A baby, a baby changes everything. And I stand here to testify. If you don't believe, think again. Read the scriptures carefully. 
because Mary gave birth to the offspring of the woman that not just bruised, but crushed the serpent's head. And because the seed of the woman called Jesus, that baby that grew up to become the savior of the world, because he successfully crushed the serpent's head, you and I today are redeemed by the blood of the lamb. I wrestled with that song for over two months. It was a nice song. And I sought desperately from God, help me to understand what this nice song is saying. A baby changes everything. That night in Bethlehem, when the world was busy taking part in a census, a Jewish teenage girl gave birth to a baby. And that baby changed everything. Let's stand. You have come here today and you have watched our attempt at presenting to you the Christmas story. And it culminated in a beautiful song that some of us will be hearing several times over this Christmas season, that a baby changes everything. But you would have wasted your time if you came here today and all you leave here doing is with the joy and the pleasure and the privilege of having seen the Christmas story on display. Because let me tell you something, that baby who grew up to be a man that baby who went to Calvary, that baby who Satan attempted to abort, attack, and annihilate. On that cross, when he died, he scored a victory over Satan of eternal proportion. After that, Satan never, ever, ever can touch Jesus. And Jesus is here today to cause a baby to change everything in your life. Let me ask us to bow our heads. And as we bring this part of our service to a close, I want you to think very seriously about your own circumstances. Maybe life is going well for you, or maybe things are bad for you. Maybe you are in trouble in one form or another. But I am telling you this, that until you meet this baby that changes everything, your life is in turmoil. Your life is upside down. Your life is meaningless. And things will only go right. Hear me well. Things will only go right. When the baby Jesus, who became the savior of the world, comes into your life. This Christmas season, while we celebrate the baby in a manger, will you join in celebrating the Christ who is your savior? Right where you are. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. I'm going to ask everyone to pray this prayer after me and if it is your desire if it is your desire for the baby Jesus turned Savior to change everything in your life then as we pray this prayer I want you to join with us and mean what you say but everybody together we will pray dear God, dear God. thank you for your eternal plan thank you for, your eternal plan. Thank you for that day when you first revealed your plan, when you first revealed your plan to, no to no one else but Satan, that the offspring of the woman, the of the woman would, one would one day crush his head, and all he could do, all he was, to was to bruise his heel. God, we watch in wonder, God, watch in wonder. all kinds of attempts were made to abort, to attack, to attack, 
to annihilate the seed of the woman. But in the fullness of time, you brought Jesus. And that baby changed everything. Today, God, I stand before you. And everything in my life needs to change. I need salvation. I need to be born again. I need to become a member of God's family. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Cleanse me. Wash me. Change everything. Make me brand new today. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. After this, there'll be a lot of things going on, including they're going to be transforming this room into a dining area so that we can all have lunch together comfortably. But if you said that prayer and you mean it, I'm asking you, step out from, from the busyness of what's going on in this room and come and speak to me and I will help you to understand what you prayed about and be assured that this Christmas you would experience the baby who changes everything. One last thing, all the children, all the children, the little saints, the young explorers and the teens, we're asking you right after these guys sing to meet us in your regular classroom around the back. We have something special for you. And from my heart and Pat's, we want to say to you, Merry Christmas, everyone. God bless you. And because our baby changes everything, we just want to give him our worship as we wind down today's service. So we're going to sing that refrain, Oh, come let us adore him.
bless you. Merry Christmas. Do not leave. Just give us a few moments to transform the space so that we can fellowship and we can have a meal together. God bless you. changes everything mm -hmm. a baby changes everything the man she loves she's never touched how will she keep his trust a baby changes everything Baby changes everything. 